and receive information that could change everything down here. In order for a physical organism to survive in a super high energy cosmic energy field, it has to raise its vibration, its electrical vibration, its frequency, its, its harmonic value. There are examples of saints, of Catholic saints, walking to burning furnaces and flames all around them, and they don't even get a scratch. They don't even get a, a, a blister. Now, how does that happen physically? Because a normal person who walks into you know, a flaming furnace is going to die, is going to burn. Well, what fire really is, is the difference in potential, of energy potential, between a low energy or low frequency life form and a super high en frequency energy, which is what fire is. But when a high frequency waveform enters a high frequency field, the difference between them, there's very little friction, so there's no burning. Now, when you think of NASA looking for extraterrestrial, the proof of extraterrestrial life, they're looking for these habitable zones in, in planets like ours where the temperature is just right, you know, 72 degrees, and the water melts, and, you know, you're far enough away from your sun but close enough to get a nice suntan. They're looking for that. But when you understand membranes in biological systems, the membrane around a cell, there are examples of increasing the frequency or energy of a membrane and it's surviving in a much higher temperature environment really, really well. So it's really all about the energetics of a cell, of an organism, and its membrane. So the problem is Fields of energy that emanate from living systems that are super high energy, they transmit that energy to everything around them. We can take an example of a Tesla transmitter coil, which is transmitting real electricity, and then you just put some copper wire and, and spin it in a circle in a coil, which has no electricity in it, and hold it near it. That coil, that, trans that receiver coil with no energy will start to radiate with energy because it's receiving the transmission. We're kind of the same way. And what happens is, is super high energy beings, basically because we're such a weak energy field, they fry our circuits. This is why I believe the God of Moses warned the people, you know, he put markers around the mountain because if you get too close, you are going to burn. You're going to fry. And, and Moses somehow had trained and did mystic practices like some, you know, like I mentioned, some of these Catholic saints who can be in these high-energy fields of fire and they don't even burn. He was able to withstand the super-powerful vibrations of his God. Now, I think in the fourth kind, it was kind of very similar to that. The, the new children being born into the new sun and the new energy, their DNA is getting imprinted with this kind of information. And their abilities, we're not prepared in the Western world to, to understand and deal with some of these abilities. And I've seen incredible things happen with my own daughter just before she was born and in the aftermath. That, that is like a science fiction movie. I mean, most people could not understand it, but because of my background in science and daily meditation for 30 years, it's very easy for me to and my wife to deal with. In fact, tonight, this is really exciting because just before the show started, my wife and baby are asleep in, in our bedroom, and, and I have these one of these little infrared camera monitors, so the, our bedroom is pitch black, and I'm looking on the monitor, which is night vision, and I see this soft, round ball of light coming down from the ceiling and going right into my daughter's head, and it's the ball of light is about the size of my wife's head. And because the show hadn't started yet, I went in and I whispered, I said, Crystal, you know, I, I just, I can't even believe what I just saw. I just saw this ball of light on the night vision go into Alira's head. And she said, I was just praying to my angels to ask for protection for her. We have an infinite supply of knowledge, resources. I've seen the most incredible inventions on YouTube and Zorg.com that... If they got funding, this country would go into a super world overnight, literally a super world overnight if we funded these inventions that are happening on YouTube. And we're so stupid because we say, well, there's no money for those inventions in the bank, but, but what is money? What does a person do with it? They, they pay their rent or their mortgage, and they eat food, and they drive their car, and they take care of their, themselves and their kids. Well, where does all that money go for the mortgage? It goes back to the bank. So does 
the money to the landlord. It just goes back to the same people that generated it. So what do you mean? What all we're doing is living in a box and we're, we're eating food that's there. We have millions of tons of food that rots every year worldwide. So we, we're really stuck on this money thing. And that's where the people in Egypt are frustrated. They know in Greece now they're doing barter, you know, because they know they have enough olives and feta cheese and Greek food to feed everybody. So what do you mean there's no money? There's everything that we spend the money on. So what's the problem? Who are the who are the puppet masters that are keeping us in a in a subdued state of consciousness? Is this being done by the uh, the uh, the the financial establishment, the uh, religious establishment, to some degree? I mean, what are your thoughts on the repression that we may be experiencing that's that's keeping us from getting into the new paradigm as quickly as maybe we should? Well, I think a lot of us feel trapped. I mean, let's go to your first level. You know, just from a, a financial perspective, we all want to work. Americans love to work, but we're saying there's no money, and we're we're trapped. And and it's a crisis situation when when people who want to work and want to raise children can't because we're saying there's no money, but there's everything we we need to do. So we want to shift on that level really bad. And I think what's happening in Egypt and Tunisia is just the beginning of a massive ripple effect. And what they've demonstrated there in Egypt is, you know, and this is in, in Plato's Republic, your government is only as powerful as the military is willing to support them. And you think of who the military guys are. I mean, they're guys and girls and women that, that men and women that, frankly, in our country live in poverty conditions in a lot of these uh, communities. And they are only going to support their government as long as their government is doing the right thing, Plato says. And once they oppress this very same people they are, they eventually turn. And then we're seeing this happening in Egypt. We feel the people in America and in Europe and the whole world feel right now that the, the financial establishment has pushed them too far. You've made us work so hard that, that women can't even be with their children. They, they have to, we have to make so much money that we have to have nannies. Um, my wife and I saw this hilarious movie called Nanny, and we don't, we can't even have that bond anymore because we're 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 on adrenaline. We're you know we're on Starbucks coffee trying to make the money to to make everything work, and we're going as fast as we can, but we're still not good enough. That's what the establishment is saying to us. So people want change on that level so bad, and if it if it doesn't happen soon, you're going to see a meltdown on a scale that makes the last financial crisis seem like like nothing. And on the second level, on an educational level, we keep thinking that, well, we did a pretty good job so far, so let's keep educating our children the same way. Well, our children are the new world. So they're going to be us next. They're going to be the, you know, the doctors and the, you know, agriculturalists and the architects and the scientists and the massage therapists and the musicians. They're going to be everything. So the emphasis on them is everything, because how they turn out determines whether we're going to make it or not. And then when you, once you look back in history far enough, you realize that you know, a great God doesn't necessarily come out of the sky. What is our greatest hope? That are we going to have to live under this oppression forever, or periodically throughout history, does the universe separate the riffraff from the more holistic or more harmonious people? And in quantum systems, I love looking at science, and I love looking at biology, because science and biology can give you indicators of what's really possible in the universe. In when you have a truly disordered or chaotic system, truly disordered, unharmonic system in the quantum universe, it separates itself off from a system of order, of perfect harmony. They eventually can't coexist. They separate into two different fields. And what Claude Swanson says about how do you explain, you know, two girls who physically went into another dimension and came back, he said there are examples in history where 
tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands to possibly millions of people suddenly disappeared and they never came back and this there are, there's evidence of this in archaeology possibly even in Machu Picchu nobody knows where the skeletal remains of the people are uh, the point I'm making is you know and I, I really believe in the power of the universe and I've seen it happen I've witnessed things myself physically disappear solid objects disappear in fact, I've had two customers with two of my pendants have their pendants physically disappear, you know, right in front of them. And so objects, and we now know in quantum physics, you know, entanglement theory tells us, in fact, this is being done at major universities uh, in Queensland. These two physicists, uh, Jay Olson and Timothy Rowell from the University of Queensland, are showing that if you can entangle to an, an object or even an, a, a field of consciousness, field not of consciousness but of actual information with a distant point in time and you would entangle those two points together they merge they separate off entangled systems that are not in harmony with the observable system which is the world now they actually separate off and they physically disappear Claude Swanson says that they synchronize with each other which is the same thing as entanglement all of their wave functions, and there's many more wave functions than frequency and spin and angular momentum. There's 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 a t what I call a total harmonic value. Then an entire civilization of consciousness, conscious beings, can separate off from the lower riffraff, and suddenly, all the oppressors and the people who suffer from greed and, and malice and, and violence, they, suddenly they're all separate, and they're not with the rest of us anymore. And we live in two different parallel were dimensions of earth and i believe this is going to happen i believe that will likely happen more than i believe that the physical world will end and there'll be earthquakes and and everything the mountains will rock and everything will fall to pieces and if you think of the randomness of these vortices you know, when a pole shift starts to happen the the north spinning magnetic field actually no uh, the north magnetic pole of the Earth is actually a south magnet. NASA says that it's the north end of your magnet that goes towards the south because they're attracted to each other. Right. So it's actually south um, energy. And then the south pole is actually a north end of a magnet. When they start to become unbalanced, as the magnetic field of the Earth is collapsing, and it's collapsed 10% since the 19th century, it's easier for those poles to flip. And you start to get all these little spinning vortices everywhere. Now, those vortices are really interesting because they, you can use them. Consciousness could possibly be using these vortices to take you into other dimensions. In the beginning of our discussion, we're talking about that we are electrical systems. We have a mag any, any system that has electrical energy running through, it's going to have a north and a south pole, just like the planet, a north-south magnetic field. And any magnetic system, electrical system, is going to receive electromagnetic energy and be affected by it. So only high-energy biological systems are going to survive the change, which is really incredible to think about how nature does this. I mean, it only allows so much time for biological systems to evolve and eventually physically evolve to the point that they can survive the coming changes. The question is, what will happen? Will there be a transfer of energy in this new super-cosmic energy environment the further we go north? Or will we literally vibrate into a higher dimension? And thanks to NASA looking into, you know, invisible spectra of light, we're now seeing um, energy fields, dark energy and dark matter clouds in the early formation of galaxies. We're now seeing what the visible spectrum cannot see. But what's also amazing is the human auras, biophotons or biological light emanations, discovered by German physicist Fritz Albert Popp, clearly span both the visible light spectrum and the invisible light spectrum. So a lot of our light clearly goes beyond what is visible. In fact, the, the higher energy emanations coming off of living things have more energy in them than the visible light spectrum has, because the higher in frequency and light you go, the more energy there is. So the part of our bodies our light bodies are high energy bodies and they can withstand this change but a physical organism has to have a high energy membrane to survive the higher 
cosmic energies. And that's nature's way every so many million